Today is Memorial Day, May 30th, 2022. Went and got the baler out of the shed. Last year was our first year with this baler. We bought it used from a guy that barely used it. As I learned with my mother-in-law's baler, you kind of have to get these things broke in and set. So one of the things we battled on hers, this is the Massey 1734. When she first got it, we had to carry a pocket knife around, jump off sometimes, and cut the twine. And we battled that for a couple seasons and finally got things broke in and working. A few of the things that I had to do was I've already, already removed the knife that's under here. And we'll show you when we go to put it back on. It's right down in there. And they're not very sharp to begin with. You can run your finger along it and not get cut. Plus they paint everything. This one even has some, I don't know if you can see it, uh, damage or bluntness right there. So what we're going to do is hone this on some emery cloth and get the paint off of it and sharpen it. Also, these are the things you've got to check. We went under there to take it off and the screws were not even tight from the factory. So obviously a little bit of play, a little bit of give. It's not cutting the string. It's hot. It's sweaty. You're getting pissed off. And these are the little things that you got to learn the um, personality of your baler. Uh, that's my little pet peeve about them sometimes. And then also I'm going to polish the paint off of this where this slides. When the twine finishes, this slides forward. And it works pretty good, but also a lot of chaff builds up here. And so that's annoying. So going to polish everything up, try to get it all set, and um, make this thing cut every time. Her baler has been used now for many years. It's broke in, and it hardly ever misses a cut twine. So that's where we're, what we're working on, getting this one in shape also. That's probably pretty good for a baler knife. We'll do that. We'll polish the other side right quick too. It's hard to keep the right angle. now we're going to have the paint off and that's that's a pretty good edge there I don't know what edge I'm going to turn it around on that's a pretty good edge We'll stop with that. 
still on the 1734 what I have found in using these balers I didn't tape much of it we've been battling it for two hours is the knife we have it now we have it sharp we have it uh, on correctly it actually was not put on correctly I've seen this twice now I looked in the book at the drawings and the pictures and in some of the pictures they have it on backwards and some of them they have it on correctly but that's neither here nor there uh, it's fixed we took a file we, the, the paint kept on the anvil that bottom part is the anvil we took a file and we had to clean all the paint off and rough that up so this thread grips good and then that was making this stick out here is the mechanism we had to take all these bolts out and polish all the paint off it's quite thick they have a primer and a paint probably baked on same here this is all binding up and it would get stuck in the down position and then the arm couldn't swing over all these little things add up paint in here this spring made the paint the spring here made the paint like it was threaded so the washer that slides would catch in the threaded paint so you had to get that off and just little things you got to do to get these working properly now another thing that is annoying is when they mount this electric actuated arm on here they only use one bolt so over time this begins to move on you you can see the witness trash there begins to move on you so you have to get it all readjusted and put a second bolt in and if you do it too far this will cam over center right here and then you can't get it open sometimes while you got a bail rolling around in there so you have to get that just right and it needs two bolts Heston you need two bolts in there so that they don't slip on you and get everything adjusted to where it comes around and pulls this into the cut position right down there this here we have to tighten the chains yet with this wooden block because I learned on my mother-in-law's I was running them loose and I began to hear this surging as it went around as it would take up the slack next thing I know chain had busted wrapped all around in here had to get that up ruin this pulley that's why I got the part numbers for mine because I had to go buy those parts so you want to keep your blocks tightened there is adjustment back here there should be and you have an idler here to move down as your chains stretch you will need to keep these tightened this is not good you need this uh, you need this deflection cleaned up and adjusted or else you're going to get this surging you'll hear it and it is also rough on your gearbox so if you run your shafts too loose you could probably even twist off your shaft down there so little things you got to do to the 1734 to get it broke in I have now tightened the chain up by sliding this idler down this is a 15 16 nut still has quite a bit of adjustment I'd say one inch behind it to slide down as your chain stretches these chains are under a lot of uh, shock load in my opinion so they will stretch over time and will need replaced um, this here has only about a half an inch of adjustment so I'm gonna need to get a new block from the dealer Be able to turn it slide it down a half inch so that's gonna take the slap out of there I would think that they could actually make this slot a little longer and I didn't adjust this one at all so anyway it's not a big deal uh, we'll get through the season with that we have to let the pickup down now and since I use the drum mower I'm cut pretty low and I'll be down here in this setting and then the gathering wheels I'm gonna switch tractors to the one with the cab and still have to run my electrical for the electric twine wrapping capability so I think 
That's about all I can really go over with you. Oh yes, there is one other thing. The previous owner that had it before us, we used it last year. Like a, There's some poly twine wrapped around the pickup. I'm going to get that cut out of there right now and get back to you. It is right in there. <clears throat> we are now out in the back field. The shop is up there. We're going to roll this up. Tested it in four different places. It was 14.3, so we should be good. These balers like dry hay. Get you a hay tester and go by what the manual. I think it says between 14 and 18 percent. So now we're going to see if we've got the tying, or not tying, correction, this does not tie the wrapping of the twine and the cutting of the twine fixed to make it a little better. So here we go. I don't have a holder to give you action shots today. I'll make a few and see what happens. First bale of the season. The cutter appeared to work. Don't be afraid to put string on your bales with this baler. Uh, also though you have to, like I'm out here on the edge, there's two right there. One of them is snug, the other one isn't. You have to be careful if you put too much out here on the edge it just falls off and you got a big clump of wasted twine. So I got that one about right. Don't be afraid to put some twine on these says in the book don't skimp on the twine basically is what it says and then when you move them that was a good full windrow you want good full windrows and weave back and forth like the book says but when you move them make sure you get them off the ground so you don't rub that twine off if these balers were able to be net wrap they would be awesome in my opinion as much as my opinion is Never get under your baler unless your safety devices are up. It appears that everything is good. Your twine tension, we picked up a little bit in here. And run them full. Try, don't, even when this thing clicks, this is your clicker, goes When this is full, I get them way down in here. Make a big bale and it'll wrap better on the twine. And so the first bale of the season is done. And what I also want to point out is this pointer right here is arbitrary. You gotta learn where yours, when I start seeing my twine in this slot all the way over, I send it home. I don't wait and see if I can get it out on the edge because that's when the twine will fall off and you'll waste it. Same thing goes for when you get over here. When you get over on this slot and you see the twine, let it wrap a little bit and then start, doesn't matter where this is because it's actually like right there. And if you go way over here, you're gonna have twine off the side of your bale. So you wanna learn where your indicator is. Right here, that's fully home. I go home, once I start seeing twine here, I send it home. Make sure you get enough wraps and I send, I just send it home because if you go over here and stop, you're going to waste twine. It's going to fall off the edge of your bale. Send it home. Don't stop until she's cut and she stops right here. If for some reason it doesn't cut and the twine just keeps going out after you send it home, you got to shut your machine off, the baler, shut it off, open the gate, drive ahead, the bale will come out, and then you have to cut it with a pocket knife Cut it off, come back here, don't get under your hay baler, and gently pull whichever one it is back in and put it down here in your twine. After this, I'm going to go to plastic twine, because if I put these on my cement floor and they get any moisture in there or something, they rot on the bottom, and I don't like that. That's my advice so far. We're going to make a few more. I wish I had a magnetic mount today. Also, your rod up here, right in there, that's got to be disappeared when your gate is closed. If that's still sticking up, that white rod, then your gate is not locked and you will not make a tight bale. These are approximately 600 pounds, I think. 
So uh, that's his first cutting. First cutting is always a little fluffier, in my opinion, with these baler than second cutting. Second cutting packs a little tighter and is a little heavier. Here's what I'm talking about. I did not get over, well I did, but this is, it came off the side. You'll see, this is what I'm talking about. So now I've wasted this twine. Let's get it. You gotta learn where your marks are on it, but I also, this bale is misshapen. It's not as square as I'd like it. I wasn't weaving enough and I had a small, I had a small windrow. So you want to rake some good fluffy windrows. This, all of this is probably going to fall off. I will take the end here and try to tie it over to that so I can salvage that on there. But that's what I'm talking about. You gotta learn where your gauge is. I'm missing some here. It's not the best bale. I was on a very thin windrow. You gotta weave back and forth and let them work. I got a lot of twine on that side. The sun was there. Plus I got hay packed over on that side. Couldn't see. So that's where you can get some wasted twine. Just trying to show you I'm not the best at this either. But it, it's the baler. It's what you got to work with. And that's what, that's what we have. Don't forget on this baler you're dealing with a hobbyist baler small four by fours so I even have the tendency to expect more but it all comes down to learning the machine I tied this up here with the excess but it also is about bale forming you can see this one is a mistake I will try to do better but I don't get them right either we got high high winds out here see it's pulling that that way so anyway that's what we're doing the new holland is doing great and the tying or not the tying the cutting problem i think is solved i've done three and i haven't had an issue but of course now i've bragged on it so it'll probably balk on the next ones and that's where we're at and i'm going to make some more we had to stop and go fuel up the dx45 both of these tractors are the same make one's green or one's blue one's red get my colors straight uh, we really like these they're hydrostat I really feel safe with my son driving them if he were to fall off the tractor for some reason uh, they completely stop because of the pedal hydrostat on the other side you got front and reverse they work great on the baler drum mower on that unit over there raking and tedding uh, Timothy 11 years old has cut this hay he has tedded half of it. His father-in-law came out because he likes to drive tractors too and tedded half of it yesterday. And Timothy has raked it. This is his first time raking. He did an excellent job. The wind is atrocious out here blowing the, the uh, wind rose around a little bit. But I'm getting back to picking up these bales. I like, I really like, you can't see it now, the two-pronged spear and you go down low and get in the outer edges and you pick it up and when you take it to the barn keep it high enough so you don't rub your string off I hope you can hear me and all this wind and they stack really well the center prong you would think that one prong in the center is great but these bales are like 600 pounds and it kind of pushes them around and I've seen it push the core out right here this core all the way around I've seen it push that right out so I really like the two prong pickup and these tractors work great for the hobbyist making hay and uh, we're gonna get to it now and we seem to have t fixed the cutting problem on the twine so we're gonna roll up some hay and get this to the barn tonight yet it is 10 till 6 we're gonna go up to the house and eat some um, roasted chicken and gravy for Memorial Day. We had hot dogs yesterday. Here is a bale. I was on small windrows and I was driving like a drunken sailor. Literally, you think you're almost going, running over where you're going to miss the windrow. Weaving back and forth, just like it talks about in the manual. I got nice square edges. 
I got it all the way across I'm getting mastered where my uh, tape gauge is on that uh, indicator because none of that's just arbitrary where they put the sticker and screwed it on I got good twine it gets it tight never gets it as tight on the edges as I would like but uh, that's I mean it's the brakes of the game it's still wrapped up it beats uh, lugging uh, square bales around so it can be it can make a nice bale the uh, going to shut down here and then come back and finish after dinner. So I wanted to just show you a good perfect bale and I've got I've got more misshapen than I have perfect out here today. It takes a while to get back in the groove. If you were doing this every day, you would be uh, you would be making some pretty nice square edges on your bales. The twine has not missed once. I think we got that solved. How to break in your 1734 because they put way too much paint on it and so everything is working good it says we've got 11 bales on the counter have to make sure that's clicking every time and we'll get a count here with Timothy and go get some chicken my son Timothy 11 years old put these in here today with the tractor did an excellent job, very proud of him. He did most of this work under my supervision. I did the baling. I don't think he's ready for the baler yet. And he did the cutting, half of the tedding, and all of the raking. And he did a great job in packing them to the barn, 13 bales. Very proud of him. Well, the end of the day, everything has performed wonderfully. The uh, baler, I think, has now finally been adjusted. We couldn't bale the middle field, what we call the middle field here. It's still like at 19.1%, and then it variates to 169 So we'll just give it one more day. We have one more day. Tomorrow's Tuesday. And we will be able to... Um, let that dry a little bit more. What we were bailing earlier was 14.6, I do believe. I do have, it's kind of a no-no, I have a small core in there because I'm going to bale in the morning or tomorrow afternoon. And I don't want to just tie off a little bale. Normally, you wouldn't do that if it was any bigger. I wouldn't do that. I'd just eject it. Um, can't complain. 1734s are good balers. It's just, even though you get it from the dealer, it won't be ready to go. It will have its little quirks and um, just little things that need adjusted. Basically, it's the paint. A lot of paint on the uh, knife. And this one also, and the first one, my mother-in-law's, the knife was on backwards. There's several pictures uh, you need to look at. Sharpen them, get the paint off, make sure they're going flat against the anvil. They're not angled. I've seen that. We did 13 bale and didn't miss a lick on the cutting. So we have everything adjusted accordingly. Like, share, and subscribe. This is a hobby baler. Keep that in mind. Full production net wrap is the way to go if you're going to do anything of high volume. I'm probably making anywhere from 30 to 60 bale a year and starting to make a little less uh, because time doesn't allow me to get to everything. Um, that's my thoughts on it. Take it for what it's worth. Like I said, like, share, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next one. Help William's channel grow.